Uh, well, let's put that question to Howard Cox. He's uh, the founder of Fair Fuel UK and he's also the London mayoral candidate for Reclaim at uh, next year's uh, 2024 London mayoral elections. Uh, good morning to you, Howard. Morning, Julia, but it's not Reclaim, it's Reform UK. Reform? I'm so sorry. What did I say? Why did I, I'm, that's, I'm an idiot. I do apologise. I, I did know that. I don't know why I've written down Reclaim. <laughs> I've, I'm, I'm, I'm still recovering from the 44 degree heat in Sicily, darling. Oh, um, you no, poor thing. I know. Oh, poor me. Um, look, let, let's talk about the simple question. What does the Prime Minister have to do to prove he's on the side of motorists? Because it was interesting just what, what Emma just said, that you know, he has to, you know, what, what, what the Prime Minister says. A lot of people are getting in touch just saying, you know, he's the Prime Minister. You don't just have to talk. Walk. You have to actually do, walk the walk and do it. What do you want him to do? Well, call me a cynic. We're a, a, a year away from a general election or close to that sort of level. And Emma's dead right. The, the, the thing that to prove it is to move the 2030 ban to 2035 to, to gel with Europe. That's hey, here's an idea. Moving. Why not not have a ban? Well, uh, what, you why, know where I... Why not let the market you know decide? Yeah, exactly. You know where I... But, I mean, but to say that he moves it from 2030, which is ridiculous, it's only six years away, and moves it to 2035, I, I sort of tacitly support. But, of course, I will, the whole thing's scrapped, uh, just like you just said. I mean, you've got no worries about that from me. But, but you know, he's. I, I, I'm, a, I'm being cynical here, but I know. But I'm afraid it's all about votes. 37 million drivers, fifth largest income to the Treasury every year. I'm afraid he's got to influence them. And he's suddenly woken up and realised, hey, low-traffic neighbourhoods and all these anti-driver policies aren't very popular. Yeah, and there's this idea, isn't it? They're these horrible motorist people. They're really bad. They've got big metal boxes. They're polluters. They're bad people. And what about residents? What about people enjoying their lives? They're the same people. And people need to get from A to B. They need to get to school. They need to get to work. They need to, for their, their vehicles, for their jobs. Millions of people need their vehicles for their jobs. There has just been this idea that people in cars are bad people. I mean, if you cycle or get the bus, you're a wonderful, good saint. I mean, it, it's just such a ridiculous sort of saints and sinners idea of viewing the world and viewing the population of this country? Well, I've just done a, a television interview with a, another channel and uh, <gasps> I was up channel? against a, a group... Yeah, the, the, there is one, just one. Uh, it, on, uh, this, I was up against a green um, virtual signalling lovey and she was saying we should all get on our bicycles. Okay. And I accept, simply went back to her I said, how does my 93-year-old demented mother-in-law go to Tesco's on a bicycle? And, you know, again, no, but it's not the point. We must get them out of our cars. I say, why? And again, they can't answer it. They, this whole policy of the green division or the green fanaticists is, are based on emotion, not yeah. fact. And, that's, and your point about the fact is most people drive around the country because they have to. Something like two-thirds need their vehicle. Yeah. It's not out of choice, yeah. but it's out of choice. They choose a, a car. And let's get public transport right, because public transport outside of the big conurbations are absolutely... Well, you know the word I'd like to say. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it's terrible and very expensive as well. And that's it. Once you own a car, you may as well use it because you've got that sunk cost. Well, you mentioned, I mean, you, as we know, became the deciding uh, factor in the by-election for uh, Uxbridge, uh, Boris Johnson's old seat, probably the only reason why Tories managed to hang on to it just by the skin of their teeth. Um, we've also got, I mean, that's starting at the end of August now, um, the ULEZ zone. We, we've seen that court case lost last week. Uh, you, you're part of that challenge. Uh, you know, we're certainly helping with that challenge. There's five Tory councils saying they're trying to stop it. We've got the 20 mile per hour speed limits and we've got them on a, I know it's not technically a dual carriageway because it's not got a barrier down the middle but a huge huge big uh, road near me and that's got a 20 mile per hour zone utterly ridiculous we've got low traffic neighborhood you know bollards everywhere and and stopping people driving about causing rat runs for other people in the other area. a lot of this is just sort of let's face it it's sort of local councils lefties on local councils just sort of imposing this stuff and we're told it's what local neighborhoods want but again and again when they ask the local people they say we don't want them at all absolutely right julia because when i become london mayor and i'm confident i can do it um and 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 well, i'm gonna get rid of ltn's 20 mile an hour limits and all of you Liz, not just the extension the whole of you Liz. we need to get london moving get our cities moving yeah. again what what happened last week, I attended that uh, ruling of the judge to say, uh, and I have to say the Tory councillors that took that on, their case was appalling. It didn't have any clout. It didn't, and, and I'm afraid the barristers involved, I watched them, didn't have much now. They yeah. didn't pick up the point that the, 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 the Sadiq Khan is dishonest. He manipulated a public consultation agreement mm -hmm. uh, and he's using uh, fake health data, all sorts yeah. of things. He's even yeah. ordered the cameras before the public consultation was announced. All those sorts of things, that would have counted. And now he's going to crow like mad. And unfortunately, 
a uh, lot of the other mayors around the country and other councils will say, right, London's done it OK, we're yeah. going to do it. Now I've been saying this, it's not a London story, it's a story, everything that happens in London, like, it, it comes to every other neighbourhood eventually. We know Andy Burnham is planning it in Manchester, I mean, and that's the thing, that you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen to everyone. Well, we saw these 50-minute neighbourhoods and things, and a lot of us are very wary, especially after those rules during lockdown, limiting where you could go, how you could travel, how far you could go. Um, there is a real concern about this because again you know if you're wealthy and you can just pay anything you know that's the thing about speeding you get points that actually affects your ability to drive eventually whereas you know it's got to be fair whereas some people go oh, i don't care i can pay the 12 pound 50 for you less i can pay the fine for this or fine for that i don't care but actually you know most people do care they don't have that sort of money that is a lot of money to an awful lot of most people in this country and um and 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 it, it does impact on people's freedom and that's the thing for most people a car is part of your freedom to get around I couldn't have said it any better, Julia. You're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, most of all of these anti-driver policies hit the poorest, the hardest, small businesses, all those sorts of people. They're the ones going to be suffering. And in London, as I said, came on your show a, a few months back, I made, I made the point about a study, an economic study, that in London, again, the effect of ULES on GDP is a cost of nearly £1 billion pounds per year. Yeah. And that means that those that's made up of people like plumbers and electricians not coming into trade in London anymore. They're not going to do it at all. Yeah, that's it, a very it, good point. But, but you mentioned also, and this is something that really is a bugbear for me, these these lies that are sold uh, by uh, Sadiq Khan, the London mayor. Um, this whole 4,000 people die every year in, the, in London. <laughs> as Again, and, and many other thousands around the country, obviously, by, by definition, extrapolate from that, uh, from, from pollution. I mean, this is absolutely... I mean, it's... it's literally a lie because there's a, a study a very long detailed study and the study says that we lose the equivalent of four thousand lives a year equivalent over the entire population so you're looking at 10 million people so and people losing a little bit of their lives so i'm going to i live in central london i'm going to live one or two weeks shorter as a result of there being some pollution. Now, vast amount of that pollution comes from having things like fridges, street lighting, heating, um, uh, people having fans on when it's hot, the stuff that makes life worth living and bearable and pleasant for us. Not from cars, not from diesel cars or anything. I mean, it is interesting. This is such a complete lie. You know, people, we've had one death. There is a little girl, very, very sadly, that the, the, the coroner believed it was as a result pollution living right next to a horribly busy polluted road yet yeah, look absolutely let's deal with things like that but the reality is you know pollution is not getting worse it's getting a lot better it didn't need you les to do it it doesn't in any other city Correct. we've got less pollution because there was just if the public were aware of the facts they wouldn't support these policies at all would they well, that's right. And uh, as I said, I was up against someone who's thrown at me. People are dying. And I said, show me the facts. And they all get very uh, worried about it. It's come yeah. out of the Professor Ferguson modelling school. Oh, yeah. Uh, as, as you know. Do you remember that one? Oh, and uh, so what what we're seeing, actually, is actually, I, I'll keep going back, a motive. Every time you see uh, Sadiq Khan talk, for example, he says, people are dying. Your children's lungs are suffering. Mm. No, they're not. Yeah. What is causing uh, these problems in London and other places is poverty, not the air quality. They need not to be actually, they need to have more money in their pockets, not realise that they can't afford to buy a £20,000 electric vehicle with a 2000 scrappage scheme. They can't do it. Absolutely. Now, Cox, thank you so much for joining us. Founder of Fairfield UK, London Mayor, candidate for Reform UK, I have to state that. Uh